Hey. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Again, good evening. For those who are just arriving, there are plenty of good seats up front still. Much like class, you got to get here early to get the seat you want, otherwise you get stuck up front. Uh, thank you all for coming. My name is Nate Davidson and I am the principal here at Parkland High School. I'd like to begin this evening again by thanking everybody who showed up tonight and who's still in the process of getting here. We know you're busy, we know you have a lot on your plates, and we appreciate that you take time out of your night to come and talk with us and listen to what we have to say. Uh, we are proud here at Parkland High School of our academic reputation, of our course of studies, and really, ultimately, our philosophy of educating the whole student. Uh, this evening marks the first step in a four and a half year journey that we are going to take with you and your students together. Um, and just by the sheer numbers of parents that have shown up tonight, I'm confident and reassured in the fact that we are going to uphold that standard of excellence over the next four and a half years. Um, I can assure you, I was a parent. I, I still am a parent, but I was a parent sitting in those seats two years ago, overwhelmed by the course catalog, overwhelmed by the idea of having a freshman in high school. It will be okay. Everybody, it's mandatory to take a deep breath right now and relax. It's going to be okay. We have a great team of people here. We have a great team of counselors, administrators. You're gonna to get to meet them briefly this evening. Um, and we have an outstanding course catalog. We have outstanding options. We have outstanding programs uh, that we hope that your children will get involved with both during the day and after the school day so that they have the opportunity to experience all that we have here to offer. Our goal tonight though is pretty simple. We want you to walk away with a better understanding of basically three things. The first being our course selection process, which begins essentially tonight. Um, and we'll go through March and April and even for some into you know, the spring and into the summer. So this is a long process. You're not gonna get every answer that you probably need or want tonight, nor are you probably having even thought of all the questions that you might have. But tonight's the starting point. We'd like to get your feet wet you're gonna have the opportunity after this formal presentation is over to attend three breakout sessions. Each one is about 15 minutes long, okay? And you'll have an opportunity to pick from a variety of different offerings that we feel uh, are very important to what makes us uh, the school that we are. So that's number one. Number two, a little bit of an understanding of the course catalog. It is big, there's a lot of depth, there are a lot of courses in there. As an incoming freshman, there's only certain courses obviously that your child would be eligible to take, but there are pathways within that course catalog that you really should know about so that you can put your child on the right trajectory to get where they wanna be by their senior year. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean they have to be in the most difficult, most rigorous courses, but there are certain pathways, whether it's Project Lead the Way, or whether it's uh, you know, a music pathway or something else that we wanna get your children on, or at least we'd like to make you aware of, so that by sophomore, junior, senior year, your children are where they wanna be. Um, and then finally, obviously, who to contact if you have questions. And you may have questions, and you may have questions throughout the spring. Uh, obviously, the middle school counselors in OMS and SMS are fantastic. They do a great job and they work with us collaboratively to make sure that we, they have an understanding of what we're looking for year in and year out as far as placements. Uh, and then obviously your child's uh, soon to be high school counselors and administrators. Uh, so with that being said, you'll see the team of administrators. It's quite big. Everything at Parkland here is a little bit big. So uh, I've got a team of administrators up here who are fantastic. Uh, I'm not going to introduce each one of them, but if collectively they would just stand up and be recognized. Um, they do an outstanding job from handling academic responsibilities to disciplinary responsibilities to um, handling just whatever comes at them on a daily basis. So I'm very proud of this team. It's a very strong team. So if you guys would just stand up and be recognized quickly, thank you. So you'll be able to tell not only do our assistant principals handle caseloads by alphabet, so do our counselors. So when you have one counselor, you will have that counselor for four years, if that same administrator will be your child's administrator for four years. So um, I see people taking pictures of this. This whole presentation is going to be available online and we're recording this evening, so the recording of this presentation will be online as well. So again, large team of counselors, fantastic people. 
they know not only you know what's available within the curriculum, but services that are available to your kids. I can assure you, and I can speak from experience, that within the next 18 months, your student is going to hit a roadblock. Something is going to happen in their life that's going to cause them to come home and they're upset. That's incredibly normal, whether it's academic, social, emotional, or other, athletics, music, something, is going to provide a hurdle to them that they have never had to jump before. It's okay. They're gonna get through it, we're gonna get through it collectively, and you're going to get through it. Um, I'm dealing, like I said, a 10th grader and a 7th grader, so I'm right in the mix just with every one of you. Mr. Roberts, who I'm gonna introduce in a second, is the head of our uh, guidance department. He has a freshman. So we are not only doing this from the administrative side, but we're also doing this from the parental side as well. So the most important thing that I can do to tell you, you know, throughout this whole process is ask questions. Talk with your child, ask questions of them, ask questions of us, and we'll help to do our best to make sure your child is placed appropriately, you know, when they come to us in the fall. So with no further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Roberts. And again, I thank you for coming. Good evening, my name is uh, Eric Roberts. I'm the department chair, as Mr. Davison said. More importantly, I have a ninth grade daughter here at Parkland High School, so uh, my hair got grayer in the last several months. Um, I thought, what better way to kind of start my presentation tonight by letting you know the results of my survey with my daughter and 10 of her friends from the lunch table, all freshmen, an eclectic mix of students in theater, band, orchestra, field hockey, cross country, dance, all across the board, so talk to them about their experience thus far, how it differs from eighth grade. Every one of them said, oh, it is so much harder than middle school, but we expected that, all right? Especially if you're taking, like, we have different levels of courses here than in middle school. We have honors level courses that aren't really offered in middle school, except if you're on a very fast math track. We have a couple advanced placement offerings available in human geography, and again, depending on your math and science track. Those really don't exist in middle school. An honors level course, and the teachers will talk more about their courses, but that's an accelerated curriculum at an accelerated pe uh, pace, a lot more depth of instruction in an honors course. Requires pretty much college level reading for an AP course and even an honors course. Honors teachers expect classroom participation. My daughter was kind of shocked at this. They expect me to talk in class. I'm like, yep, welcome to an honors class. So class participation is a big part of high school. You're gonna expect it a lot more. Study skills. Many of the students I talked to got through middle school by paying attention, doing some homework, never saw a B in their life. Got to high school and realized, wow, we really don't know how to study. We really have to pay attention to what the teachers are telling us about how to prepare for quizzes and tests. The time commitment, it's a lot more. Um, you'll see something on a high school schedule called a study hall. 43 minutes of free time. Some students have one a day, others, depending on the semester, could possibly have two study halls a day. That's 43 or 86 minutes of time to get homework done, to study for tests. Those students who are heavily involved in extracurricular activities, and we strongly encourage that, if you're an athlete and you're heading out to Pocono Mountain West for a game and you're not getting home like maybe during basketball season until like nine at night, possibility you got most of your homework done during the day or a lot of your studying done in your study hall. So definitely take advantage of those study halls. That is quality time. As Mr. Davidson said, there are gonna be some ups and downs. A student might get their first B or C in a class on a test, on a quiz. It's okay, we'll start to build resiliency, all right? That's the key, that's what's really been lacking for many years, so have the students advocate for themselves. Talk to the teachers, hey, here's what happened on the test, how can I improve this, here's how I prepared, what did I do wrong? Teachers love when students come up and ask those questions, they're gonna let them know, hey, here's how to prepare. But with high school comes more independent work. I remember my daughter's first uh, history test, had a study guide, studied it, Thought she aced it and got home and said, there was stuff on the test, not on the study guide. That's so unfair. I said, well, independent reading, independent learning, those things are going to happen. So just be prepared for a more rigorous experience. Um, they're going to really develop some study skills that they need. So pay attention to the teachers, advocate for themselves. That is key. Another difference in the high school, we have a nine period day. All right. So nine periods. Our science courses are double period offered every other day. 
So that's 86 minutes of science every other day. So most students have never sat through 86 minutes of a class. So that takes some adjusting, all right? Luckily with science, they do a lot of labs in those classes, so they do mix things up. But that's a big difference. Lunch is longer, which is a very big positive for the students. You get about 15 more minutes of lunch where a lot of students can get extra homework done and whatnot. And by the way, students do need to eat lunch. So I know I'm gonna get the questions later in the breakout session. We wanna take nine classes. Do they need to eat lunch? Yes, they need to eat lunch. Nutrition is important. In regard to picking courses for next year, students are required to take 6.25 credits. Of that 6.25, as freshmen, students are required to take English, American Studies, Math, and Science. Those are a constant. Those students who are gonna be attending the Lehigh Career and Technical Institute, they'll be taking those four classes, they'll be eating lunch at LCTI, they'll be coming, or then they'll be at LCTI for their lab. So LCTI students, those four core subjects I just mentioned, and their lab at LCTI. Students that are at Parkland High School all day, you take those four courses. We strongly encourage you to take a world language, all right? Most colleges require two years of a consecutive language, whether it be Spanish, Latin, French, sign language, German, but two consecutive years of the same language. If uh, you look at pretty much any college, they'll break it down for you in terms of their high school requirements or what they expect high school students to take. You'll see world language there, minimum of two years, and depending on the college, you may see four years of a world language. Does eighth grade world language count? It does not, even though it's the first level languages, college only accept what happens in high school. So grades nine through 12, that Spanish one in eighth grade and Spanish two in ninth grade does not count for two consecutive years. So that's something that students commonly uh, get incorrect. So something to think about with the language. After that, we have five full credits there. So that's four core classes, world language, that's the fifth class. Then you're taking phys ed, which is 0.25 credits. That's 5.25. Students, again, 6.25 minimum. So that extra credit is an elective credit or electives. So we guarantee students at least one credit worth of electives. Some students are taking 1.5 credits, sometimes even two credits worth of electives. That could be anything from our pro um, excuse me, project lead away sequence of courses in biomed or engineering or computer science. Could be half year electives, drawing ones, ceramics, um, basic foods, courses like that. But electives for freshmen, the caveat here is we schedule our seniors first, followed by our juniors, sophomores, freshmen are the last students to be scheduled, all right? Freshman students will be required to take or to select alternate elective choices. These are very important, so pay attention when your son or daughter is selecting their electives because they may have to go to their third or fourth elective choice because of the alternate electives. So in choosing classes, especially the electives, choose wisely, all right? Also, the eighth grade teachers. They know your son and daughter as they have had them now for a half year. They'll have them you know, the rest of this year. They can give their recommendations at this point and also change those recommendations by the end of the year. But really pay attention to what they have to say because they really know their abilities within the classroom, you know, how they learn, things like that. So really take strong consideration into what they are recommending. Also, be realistic about the courses. Again, course levels, honors, AP, this could be the first time your students are experiencing those level courses, or even gifted courses. We have more gifted offerings here than in middle school. So high school, we want them to have a fun experience. We don't want zombies coming in at 7.40 a.m., and I see it all the time with extra large cups of Dunkin' Donuts coffee. They're 14 years old, and my Monster Energy drinks, I'm like, oh my God, Mr. Roberts, it was like an all-nighter. <sighs> Rough night, a lot, a lot of homework, a lot of academics, and also, I was, you know, I theater practice, didn't get home until 10 o'clock at night. So you want a nice balance, a nice mix of a rigorous academic curriculum that'll still allow them to participate in extracurricular activities, get that nice high school experience. You wanna look back on high school as a fun time. We did well academically, socially, we really took advantage of all the extracurricular offerings that Parkland had. So that's truly what we wanna see, to have them have a great experience. It's going to fly, four years is going to fly by. Next thing you know, we're gonna be at the PPL Center, your son or daughter will be graduating. So again, this, we're here because of the whole selection process. It is that important. So really, really talk this over with your um, children, talk it over with their teachers, their eighth grade counselor, counselors, because you really want to select 
like the best possible classes for them, the most rigorous curriculum that they can handle along with extracurriculars and things like that. So I'll be in a breakout session, three of them with the other counselors in room B131 after. If you have specific scheduling questions or how certain classes can fit, things like that, I will be available. And now I will introduce Mr. Tim Schwartz, the English department chair. Hello and good evening. I usually start, since I'm the first core subject department chair to talk, I usually begin with a quote. And Chinese philosopher Confucius once said, a man or woman who does not plan long ahead will find trouble at his or her door. So I appreciate the fact, and the English department appreciates the fact that you're here tonight. You're wanting to hear about the English offerings, especially in ninth grade, but I'll also be talking about some of the offerings that will come down in, in later grades as well. There are 28 English teachers, <clears throat> excuse me, at the high school, and I encourage you to go on the Parkland High School website if you wanted to take a look at their web pages and their Schoology pages, and you can kind of see, I don't think it says who teaches what grade level, um, but you can check out all the English teachers' websites on there. It is one of the largest departments in the school. So English is required in every grade in high school, and the content is flexibly based on the following time periods. Um, for your per concerns, ninth grade is America's beginnings to 1900 with Native American and colonial literature, and then supplemental readings that might be from other centuries as they work through the year. Then when they get to 10th grade, it's gonna be America from 1900 to the present, again with supplementary readings over the course of the year that might be from a different century. In 11th grade, it's the beginnings of the English language to the Romantic period of 1798, and again, additional supplementary readings. And in 12th grade, it's British and world literature from the 19th century England to present day and supplementary readings. And I just added this on to my PowerPoint here. Um, the, the PDF of the course book, you all know, is available online now, and you can look at all the other offerings I'm gonna be talking about on that online PDF if you like. <clears throat> in all classes in the English department, um, the content is at each grade level that we'll be studying intensive grammar, writing, vocabulary, keystone preparation, and college and career preparation. Um, the grammar, I will say, is more of a focus in ninth and 10th grade than it will be in 11th and 12th grade, because if our English teachers are doing their jobs well, hopefully the grammar issues will not be a problem by the time they're in 11th and 12th grade. Now, I'm, <clears throat> I'm going to talk a little bit about the different levels since I'm the first core teacher to talk about this. Um, our honors and AP level in the English department and for most departments is more of a scholarly and accelerated level. It's preparation for future honors and AP courses and the AP exams in 11th and 12th grade. For ninth grade students, we only offer honors English, and the same goes for 10th grade. Then by the time they're in 11th grade, they can take... AP Language and Composition in 11th grade and take the AP Language and Composition test. And then in 12th grade, they can take the Literature and Composition AP class and take the AP Literature and Composition test their senior year. Um, vocab is based on class content for, for an honors or an AP class. And a final grade of a B assures placement in the next, next year's Pathways course. So if your son or daughter is taking ninth grade honors, the pathway is going to be ninth grade honors. If he or she does well, then 10th grade honors. Then in 11th grade, AP Language and Composition. Then in 12th grade, AP, language, AP Literature and Composition. And there are summer assignments for some of those courses, and those are all on the PHS High School Quick Links. GHP, or our Gifted High Potential, uses college prep as a basis, but it's more advanced content, resources, processes, pace, breadth of material, and research, and the content is differentiated. There's online vocab from the course content based on what is in that curriculum for that particular uh, rigor level. And then college preparatory, I would say, is our most popular class. <clears throat> Prepares students for college. It's an academic level. 
It definitely is a slower pace and less content and intensity than gifted high potential, but it still is crisply paced for college course level readiness. And again, there's on-level vocab based on course content and the supplemental readings that are in that course. We offer our seminar classes, and this is more of a team approach to learning. It's a wide range of students and different ability levels, and the standards are in place in that class to improve deficient English skills in all areas, and classes are co-taught or integrated with history teachers, and there's also a differentiated vocabulary. And then our final level is our CEW level, our career education and work. This is a traditional academic education with a concentration on career preparation. Students who select this course must also be enrolled at LCTI, and the focus in this class is on effective communication and integration into the world of work, and there's a differentiated vocabulary. I would like to say that in ninth and 10th grade, where the seminar courses are available, what we want students to do is by the time they're in 11th grade, hopefully they can make their own decision with your input as well, um, of whether they think they're gonna be going to college or whether they think they're going to be entering the work world. And when I say college, I mean college or trade schools or anything like that. So hopefully by the time they're in 11th grade, they will decide if they wanna take a CP class or if they're gonna take the CEW class. Um, and at, at the LCTI, they would learn their trade and then graduate high school and enter the work world. If they take their CP class or above, they're gonna be going to a college or a trade school and learn the skills necessary for what it is they want to pursue there. The English department also has a wide range of electives, and I just had to update the page numbers this morning because it's different than the PDF that I saw this morning that you guys will be looking at. Um, we have electives in publishing, our yearbook, the Parkey, and school newspaper, the Trumpet. We have electives in writing, we have creative writing one, creative writing two, and journalism. We have stage electives in theater arts, acting studio, and technical theater. We have electives in communications, intro to mass communication, video and film production, and television news studios, and public speaking. And we also have literature and general electives in Greek and Roman mythology, sports and literature, and a couple more that I could not fit on the page there. Um, our two clubs in the English department, uh, that oversee that are the National English Honor Society where students would be eligible by the time they're in 11th grade and also our literary magazine. So if you have any questions for me specifically about the curriculum, I did bring it with me tonight and I can kind of tell you the novels and the, the, the short stories and poems and how many of each type of those pieces of literature are at each of those different rigor levels and I can answer your questions. I will be in A125 for the breakout sessions if you want to see me personally. So thank you for coming and thank you for your attention. I'm gonna turn the program over to Mr. Galusi, the chair of the math department. Okay, good evening. My name is Tony Galusi. I'm the math department chair here at Parkland High School. And I wanna begin by, I heard a common theme when we started here today by Mr. Davidson and Mr. Roberts about they know it's a stressful time for you, your son and daughter coming up to the high school. They're sharing their experiences because they have sons and daughters coming through. Well, let me tell you something. Right now, you should relax because four years from now at this time, you're going to have a whole other set of issues to deal with. <laughs> what job is my son and daughter going to get so they can get out of the house? And how the heck am I going to pay for college? So my advice to my colleagues, I had three kids that just that graduated from here and went through college. I still haven't figured it out, and I'm more stressed now than I was when they were coming in as freshmen. So sit back and relax tonight. This is nothing. <laughs> so just four quick areas I'd like to discuss with you today are math sequence, which in other words, that's the order of the math courses your son or daughter is going to take here at Parkland High School. A little bit about our course descriptions. We do have some summer enrichment opportunities, and we also have a few electives, and we have a project lead the way. So first with our math sequences, if you include our electives and our project lead the way, we have 30 math courses here at Parkland High School. They range from anywhere from seminar to an advanced topic in calculus, which is our third year calculus course. We do require three math credits to graduate, but many of our students take at least four, if not more, math credits. 
Just make sure when you're looking at the core sequence and during the breakout session, if you have any questions, this is where the majority of them come from. Um, just take a look at the finish line where your son or daughter is starting. It maps out all the courses and where they're going to be at the end. This will give you an idea of what options are available, what electives or maybe summer enrichment courses might be for your son or daughter. With our course descriptions, when you're looking at them, just take a few factors, and I know Mr. Roberts touched on this and Mr. Schwartz, um, a few things to consider before picking which level. I know your son or daughter is going into their freshman year. They might not know their career path yet, but maybe they know they want to get into the sciences or the arts or in the business. This could lead them down a path. Um, what interests they have. Do they love science? Do they love math? You know, maybe again, they're more into English. You know, that could factor into their decisions. Their motivation levels, are they involved in a lot of extracurricular activities? And their past success in math courses can lead you in that direction. Most of our math courses do have prerequisites, and a few of them, beginning with our honors pre-calculus, still require the ever popular summer work. They love to do that over the summer. Unfortunately, as freshmen, we really only have three electives for them. Our most popular, and I cannot figure out why this is the most popular, but game development and design. Don't know why kids have interest in that. We do have a technology internship, and also beginning with our project lead the way, we have a 980 honors computer science essential course, which is available for ninth graders. Oh, and yes, what the kids really love, they want to take classes over the summer. This is something I'll discuss more during our breakout sessions. I get a lot of questions about this. But basically what summer enrichment is for, when you see the path your son or daughter is taking, and you might say, oh, darn it, you know, I really love my, my son or daughter to get to pre-calculus or calculus, but where their starting is not going to get them there, what could possibly be done? Well, this is where summer enrichment comes in. Um, summer enrichment offers courses at a GHP level in Algebra 2, Geometry, College Algebra, and pre-calculus. Um, but just a couple things to keep in mind with that. The majority of these courses are taken online over the summer. They're not in here getting instruction, face-to-face -face instruction. So it will require students to be motivated, um, self-disciplined, but exams will be in person at the high school. Um, if your son or daughter decides to take one of these courses this summer, it will not count towards their GPA. Once they're in the high school, if they decide to take one after their freshman year or their sophomore year, it does count towards their GPA. But this year it will not because they're still considered in eighth grade. And also keep in mind, a summer course is cramming 180 days of instruction into 30 days, approximately over the summer. Mrs. Bennett, she'll be sharing information electronically, sometimes usually end of January, in February, for this information about our summer enrichment program. And just in closing, all right. with, with what we've done, just take a look at the big picture. When you look at this sequence, where do you want your son or daughter to get to? When selecting a course, consider which level is best. And I always remind parents, there's, there's a big difference between challenging and frustrating. All right. In my opinion, the most important thing is to build a strong foundation, regardless of the level of the course that is taken. So thank you for your time, and I look forward to meeting you and answering your questions at the breakout session. Now I'd like to introduce Mr. Sean Faluso, Science Department Chair. Good evening, my name is Sean Faluso. I teach physics here at Parkland. I'm also the Science Department Chairperson. On behalf of the 26 science teachers here at Parkland, uh, welcome, thank you for coming out tonight. I'm going to start by introducing that there's four disciplines within the science department, and those would be earth and space science, biology, chemistry, and physics. So we recommend that all students take at least one course within each of those disciplines if it's possible. However, the one that must be taken is biology because there's a keystone exam at the end of that class, so that's a state requirement. Um, because you only technically need three years of a science in order to graduate, but we do recommend taking all four if possible. So our traditional course pathway would look like this, that in ninth grade, uh, students would take earth science, 10th grade biology, 11th grade chemistry, and then 12th grade, they would take physics. 
However, if you start to page through our course catalog, you're gonna notice a wide variety of honors and AP level science offerings where it's almost impossible to take all the advanced placement offerings that we have here. And not to worry, we don't expect students to take all of those. Um, so it might be necessary in science to make your pathway a little more nonlinear where you possibly mix and match or double up in a year. And I'll explain in a few moments. But uh, for next year, going into ninth grade, the choice is actually rather simple. So the options become uh, much wider as you get into your junior, senior year, and so on. So for next year, the suggestion is that students take earth science. It's recommended for all ninth graders. And we do offer three levels there. And in terms of rigor, honors is gonna be the most rigorous. And then we have gifted high potential and college prep. Again, all of these are aligned to prepare students for college and they have that level of rigor, but um, definitely with honors, you're gonna see some long-term research projects and there's a lot more independent work, okay? Um, as far as the time structure goes, I know Mr. Roberts did mention this already, that uh, science classes typically meet 88 minutes for every other day, and then that way in between they might have phys ed or a different class paired up with that. So it is an adjustment for a lot of students that they have to make sure they put in the work on those days where you don't have class, and especially if uh, your children get sick or you miss class for whatever reason, it's a little bit extra to get caught up on. So, you know, please stay on top of them and encourage them to um, be organized so that uh, they're well adjusted to that time structure. However, for our LCTI students that uh, only have one period a day in the afternoon, we do also have some sections that only meet for 44 minutes every single day. But most students going into ninth grade should be taking one of these levels of earth science. However, since biology must be taken by all students, and some students and your children might already know that they want to pursue science and they're very interested in it and they want to take that kind of track and possibly leave some room open in their schedule down the road for taking our AP offerings. So if that's the case, we encourage you to have that discussion with your, your children's uh, science teacher and their guidance counselor to see what's going to be best for them. So the other option might be to take honors biology as a freshman. So this is a little more rigorous. We do require a current teacher recommendation that they have a strong aptitude in, um, in science and a future in science and advanced math and reading skills that there's, uh, there is a summer assignment you should be aware. And there will be an in-class long-term or long-range research project and that your children are mature, responsible, and independent learners. So again, another reminder that at the end of honors biology, there is a keystone exam. All right, if you didn't take that as a ninth grader, then you'd be taking biology in most cases as a 10th grader, in which case you'll take the keystone exam at that point. Um, just one caveat there is that if students would sign up for honors biology and then in the first week of school in the drop ad period say this looks like it's going to be too challenging, they would not drop down to CP or GHP biology. Um, because of the keystone setup, we actually have some of the biology con covered con uh, content is covered in earth science. So we would have to put them in a, either an honors or a GHP CP earth science class if that were to happen. So that's mostly what the choices are for next year. But again, I encourage you to, to look through our course catalog and start looking at some of our AP offerings. Uh, we don't expect children to take every single one of those, but if your child does love science already and they are interested in that, they might want to consider this accelerated pathway, or they could potentially double up and take earth science and biology um, the same year as a freshman. That is possible. So if you have some questions about that, I'll be in, um, I think, B2 or C210 after this session. And you may have noticed that we also have a biomedical engineering program. That's actually under a different department. So Mrs. Laura Kowalski will be available in, in uh, room A127 during our breakout sessions if your child have a number of uh, science school activities get involved as much as they can.
So again, thank you for coming out tonight. Our uh, chair, uh, Frank Kotzman. Great. Hello. Um, um, freshman. Tonight, I'm here to give you an overview of the studies here at PE. We have to take all the years the studies courses off. But also give you your soft. Start with uh, about the different levels. So, during uh, and so this must also be excellent. Furthermore, one should have affinity for history. Content your own time. for example class so next they are not required further comics pathways in the twelfth If they have a level of pre calculus, calculus, choices, but uh, only question of difficult, uh, Mr. So through this optional elective in the ninth grade, the geography class not replace the American studies, um, but it is a great introduction. Grade, tenth grade, and every American only. There's, again, the course level, you can enroll in the history class. Um, and we have the optional elective of AP Human Geography as well in 10th grade. Great. The AP World History level, optional, um, and you can get quite a few of them. They do not replace what is required. Actually, true social science classes, not history classes, economic and government. He on both sides of a option of AP, take AP, and see the lives in the 12th grade year. The and as a take
our um, with our with offer starting in eleven. They all credit, and that they do a sequence. I have up here that there's certain classes that are in the fall, and then particular the course catalog. Maybe that would be. Your child and in the club three day that and right now at home. So thank you. This Information questions. Bonus. Offering. Learning is a skill that all students. Thing. Thing. Expected. We have a very strong program that offers students courses that will lead them. To see in a second. Third. If you look at the course. To many other variety of language choices, and we're very pleased to offer these courses. Department readiness standards roadmap for learners to develop with cultural. Language and culture is an essential piece of being an educator. Here, continually feedback that not only modernized tremendously in recent years, students. Through easily, also able to virtually sites through the internet. We also offer we offer levels one through five of French, German, and two through five levels offered. In levels four and five, students have the opportunity to earn dual enrollment credits with a fee. Exam. Aid, you may between honors, selection with your middle school. And also be afraid to take if you're a motivated student who enjoys studying a language. Child has level one thing. With up or for their GPA, but their final grade.
language off instructor instructor from L tri C we offer Arabic and Chinese We have a super active department, clubs and honor societies for for the high school. Just be um, aware that academic courses they should be prepared for high school academics. So if they're not. language and they can take another one if they're in. We have a super active department. We have clubs and edible Forty-five minutes or so. You're not expecting off to what areas of sessions. Announcement to to change classes. Where they where they have. Um, you heard from our core folks on the Mr. from OMS will know him uh, to talk program we talk about education joy we look at music programs and our athletic pro athletic this evening as well there's a game going on over the gym but the, the kids really really enjoy Are the things so sure you, you do it. push them to get somewhere else the eight o'clock to three question called you don't some courses that actually carry okay without getting into too much of that we have Student can sit in our building. We're actually and get this is so interested in hearing carbon technical um, is an academic re requires specialized career and logical. So if you're a kid that maybe is a little bit more focused on uh, career uh, work, maybe not your college track, that may be something you want to hear a little The arts and athletics uh, are, are fantastic. And the opportunity to get in those worlds as well. Right now, 
Uh, if everybody's okay, even around here, we'll go to our course guide will be given to your kids. Your book, that's the one online. They will get a book from the school at some point soon. Right. If you have any questions, I'll hang out here as well.